Today we're gonna to be talking about trials specific fitness, staying injury free so you can progress and compete. My name is Tommy T, welcome to Trials Progression, and this is something that the viewers have asked for, so I'm listening. Now I'm not a physical therapist, however, I did get a chance to play volleyball at Ohio State and learn a lot about strength and conditioning, as well as I've run my share of marathons and ultra marathons, so hopefully something that I'm gonna share with you today can be helpful. Now, if you guys want more on fitness, you guys can search for another channel. I'm just going to be skimming the surface. And my typical viewer is a male who's between 45 and 65. Now, if you're that age, potentially you've grown a little bit more round around the midline and you might not be in that great of shape. So it's going to be tricky to try and tell you do a 180 and become really healthy. So we're just going to try and make small adjustments. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about nutrition. In my experience, when I start to work out, my body begins to tell me what foods I should and shouldn't eat. And so I just want to say hydration. That one I will hit on for a moment because water makes a big difference, especially when you think about an event or some place where you might wind up cramping. Proper hydration, even the night before, will impact your ability to ride and also for your brain. Your brain needs water as well in order to be able to process and think clearly. It's important not to feel fatigue, especially in the last loop of a competition, both physically and mentally. We also want to avoid injuries, especially trauma from fall, as well as repetitive use injuries like tennis elbow or tendonitis. Even the angle of your levers is going to impact potential wrist soreness. So I'm going to be hitting this from kind of three different angles or three different approaches or levels. And the most aggressive one being someone who's going to have a nutrition plan and be really intentional to work out, hit the gym, weights and all that type of stuff. But if you're not even close to that, I do want to say just doing something and working hard is going to be better than nothing. And then the last thing will just be an entry level, which I think you guys will enjoy as a little fitness challenge. Now what's gonna make this trial specific is I'm gonna be focusing on grip, endurance, core, flexibility, legs, and upper body. I can still remember when I first started riding my trials bike in my backyard, doing tons of wheelies, and man, my forearms were just completely blown up. I mean, all those wheelies, I could not hang onto the bike, and I was breathing so heavy. I just didn't have much endurance. So a simple way to work on your overall grip strength is just going to be with a hand gripper, a hand strengthener. You guys can use these when you're commuting. I have one that's in my car all the time just to work on that forearm strength. Now, when it comes to cardio and endurance, unfortunately, a lot of people have sedentary jobs. As a manager, I get between 10 and 15,000 steps in a day when I work. Now, if you've got a sedentary job, it's going to be a little bit more challenging. I would encourage activities like mountain biking, walking up hills, splitting wood, even getting a trials pedal bike, rowing, or just riding more. Honestly, the extra fatigue at the end of a session is something that I really focus on. So for five minutes at the end, a few ideas, you can just do wheelies. Just do wheelies for five straight minutes. You'll find you're extremely worn out. You can do figure eights, staying low and in a nice seated position, especially when you're transitioning from right to left, stay in that squatted position. Doing back-to-back -back section practice, like hitting a section again and again and again and not stopping in between will definitely wear you out. And then finally, working through some hops at the end of your routine, whether you can do them or not do them, this is going to completely wear you out. Sometimes people say, what's the best workout? But I say the best workout is one that you will actually do. Something that you're going to stick with, that you're willing to do, that's not a pain in the butt, is going to be the best for you. Next thing I want to talk about is core stability, and this one's big, especially as you think about moving the bike underneath you, you want to have a stable abs as well as lower back. Now, for me, I use an app. I would recommend finding something that's easy to track along with, and I would also not only do core, but add some back-specific moves. Things like planks, bridges, supermans, doing opposites are huge. Now, if your hips need a little bit more, doing like a, a seated leg kind of looks like a dog taking a pee or donkey kicks, especially if you've got weak hips. You can also incorporate medicine ball balance, which is something I'd never even thought of until a coworker introduced me to it. The next one I wanna talk about is flexibility. Now for me being so tall and hunched over, I see a chiropractor maybe every few months if you've never considered it, I would encourage it. I also use a chirp wheel in order to get that back adjustment so that I'm properly aligned. In order to stretch out that back, especially from all the trials riding, I really like this chirp wheel. I had a cheap one, but it didn't have this little groove, this little inset for your spine. It didn't come with my padding. So I asked for this for my birthday, went ahead and spent the money. Really like it. This medium one is my favorite size. And back from the days when I was running marathons, a foam roller is great and painful at the same time. So if I'm going to work on my quads, also on your hamstrings, on your calves too. 
In addition to doing stretches, I have found that yoga is actually great. Now, I'm not going to commit to like an hour long, but a 10-minute session, there's a great channel, Yoga with Adrian. She's got all kinds of playlists for beginners, for back pain, for 10 minutes or less, and this has been really helpful for me. Now, speaking of flexibility, I would encourage you to do some warm-up before riding, especially stretches. Sometimes it can feel a little bit awkward to stretch when you're with a group, but I've found that sometimes once one person does it, everyone's like, oh, cool, a little stretching circle, and then it's a little bit less awkward. Now, your warm-up can also include your brain, and learning occurs as neurological connections are formed. You need time to rest and process what it is that you learned then to practice it again so that you're strengthening the neurological connections and making them permanent and strong. So you want to focus on what you want to work on before a training session. When I'm stretching, I like to think about, all right, what do I want to work on today and what worked last time? What was any breakthrough moments that I had as I was learning to front wheel hop? Reviewing in your mind kind of warms up your brain for that physical activity. Now, when it comes to warm up, we'll also talk for a moment about burnout. Sometimes when you're training, you just want to get something so bad, especially if you're type A, that you're like, one more try, one more try. But your brain needs time to rest. You actually learn when you pull back, rest your mind, allow yourself to sleep. It's like it's processing all that information. And then when you come back to it, your brain is fresh and you'll usually be able to progress faster, especially if you can work on it consistently. Avoiding excessive repetitions will also allow your muscles to recover because you're not hitting that same thing again and again. Your brain cannot process unlimitedly. It actually needs a break to pull back. So your body, your brain, you're going to need time to pull away and avoid burnout. All right, next I want to talk about legs. Now this often relates to poor form. I know for me, I'm usually hunched over because I don't want to squat and squatting though actually helps with traction. So I'm going to encourage squats using proper form and body weight only. If you're strong enough and you want to add dumbbells, you can do that. I would encourage you just to start with 10 squats. Give that a try. Do one set of 10 and then later on you can try another set and eventually add in additional sets until you can work up to about 100 a day. Now as I did this consistently, maybe three, four times a week, I found my legs were so much stronger. It was easy to bend over and pick up a piece of trash or have endurance on the bike. Now you can actually do squats while you're working on static balance, which is a fun, unique way to challenge yourself. And that type of squat usually results in your knees going forward a little bit. So I like to practice a little narrower foot and the knees going forward as well. I would encourage you to try split squats or one legged squats because you're going to find that you're probably stronger in one leg compared to the other. I know I usually balance static to the left, more weight is on the right, as well as I'm kickstarting the bike with my right leg. My right leg is definitely stronger and I don't want to have that imbalance, so I need to isolate and work just on that left side. Now speaking of all these squatting maneuvers, the suspension trainer is something that is super cheap. This one was $16 from Walmart and you can pick this up to assist in your training without having to go to the gym and get a membership or get all this equipment. I think this is actually a great thing to take while you're traveling as well. Consider buying one of these. Doing something like split squats will allow you a little bit more repetitions and it includes a little bit of cardio, making it more like a HIIT workout. All right, finally, we're getting to upper body and things like bench press, push-ups, incline bench. Those are all going to be great things to do. I would also encourage you to do pull-ups if you can, or rows, lat pull-down, curls, wrist curls. These are all great things to work your upper body. Now, for me, I'm usually doing about three sets of 12 with all of these different moves. I'm not going to get into the science of the weightlifting concepts, but you guys get the idea. Now, if you're currently not doing anything, the key is going to be to start small. We want to form a habit, which is something that occurs when you're able to commit to doing something again and again. So my lowest level suggestion, just kind of starter, is going to be a three minute challenge. And I'm going to encourage you to do this three times a week. So it's not going to be overbearing by any means. So here we go. We're going to strive to do 20 push-ups, 20 squats, a 20 second plank, 20 second bridge, and then 20 heel touches on each side. So that workout is something that I think most of you guys can handle. You might even be able to get it done in two minutes, which would be a challenge, but it's a place to start. It's something to do. At least if you commit to a three minute challenge three times a week, you're doing more than you were last week, which is gonna help with your endurance. It's gonna help with your injury prevention. Now I know as a typical middle-aged man, it's hard to change habits. So this is something that I'm gonna challenge you guys to do. Let me know in the comments how it works out for you. Now you have to know why you wanna work out. Having a reason or a goal is gonna make a big difference. So this three minute fitness challenge three times a week might be a goal for you. Maybe you wanna take it up a level, but it's a place to start. 
Now, accountability can also help a bunch. So at this point, what I'm gonna encourage you to do is share this video. Trials Progression is the name of this channel and Fitness Progression is what this video is all about. Trying to get you to go up a level in your commitment to stay healthy.